So on the screen there, we've got the enthalpy changes needed to calculate the lattice enthalpy for aluminium oxide. So if I just run through all of these, and then what you can have a go at is constructing the Born Harbor cycle and actually calculating the value for the lattice enthalpy. So starting at the top, we've got the atomization of aluminium. And then underneath that, we've got the atomization of oxygen. And then the next three are the first, second and third ionization energies for aluminium. Underneath that, we've got the enthalpy change of formation for aluminium oxide. And then the last two are the electron affinities for oxygen, the first and the second. So if you have a go at constructing the cycle, I'll run through the cycle and then have a go at calculating the value for the lattice enthalpy for aluminium oxide and then I'll go through the calculation as well. So there's the completed cycle. Hopefully yours looks the same. So if I run through what should be on each arrow or which enthalpy change corresponds to each arrow and then we'll finish with the calculation. Remember the direction of the arrow indicates whether it's exothermic or endothermic. Down arrows are exothermic and up arrows are endothermic. So we'll start with this one here and that's the enthalpy change of formation for aluminium oxide and then going up if we look at what's changed and remember only one process at a time so that's the two aluminium solids going to two aluminium gas so that's two times the enthalpy change of atomization for aluminium tricky one now we've got this process here so it's the O2 is being atomized into O and if you remember the process on the other side of the board, it would be a half O2 going to O gas. Well, we've got three times that. So that's three times the enthalpy change of atomization for oxygen. We've now got the three ionization energies for aluminium. And remember in the cycle, we have two moles of aluminium. And so therefore this would be two times the first ionization energy, two times the second, and two times the third. And the thing to remember is the electrons. So if we look at the first ionization energy here, what we're doing is we're removing one electron from each atom in a mole of atoms to form the gaseous one plus ions. In the cycle we've got two moles of aluminium and so we get two electrons coming off, one for each aluminium. So that would then go up to four and then that would then go up to six. So we've now got the aluminium in the form that we need. We need gaseous ions to perform the lattice enthalpy. So we'll move on to the oxygen now. What we need to do is turn this into gaseous two minus ions and we have to do that one step at a time. So the first thing we do is we turn them into O minus ions, one minus. So that's the enthalpy uh, change, the electron affinity, sorry. So that's delta H E A1. We've got three of those because there are three oxygens. So we'll multiply that by three and then this one goes up again because remember we're adding negative electrons to negative ions so there'll be a repulsion so that needs to go up it will be endothermic so this is delta h e a two and that will be multiplied by three as well and then the final thing is the lattice enthalpy what we're trying to find out we've got the two moles of three plus gaseous aluminium ions three moles of O2 minus gaseous ions, combine those together and they would give you Al2O3. So this is delta H L E. 
now we apply Hess's law. So we're saying that the enthalpy change of formation, so in other words, root 1, equals the sum of all the enthalpy changes involved in root 2. So that's all of these, remembering to double this one and treble this one and so on. So you can see in green, I've added all the values now for all of these enthalpy changes, remembering that this one's doubled and this one's trebled and so on. And at the top here, I've got virtually the, the finished Hess's Law treatment of the numbers. So the enthalpy change of formation, this minus 1669.8, equals all of these plus the unknown lattice enthalpy. And so all I'm going to do for the last step is I'm going to take that over to there. Remember, it's going to become minus, and we'll calculate the value for x. And using these values, we get a value for x for the lattice enthalpy for aluminium oxide of minus 15,452.8 kilojoules per mole.